Bismillahirrahmanirrahim In the name of God the most merciful the most beneficent Your majesties your royal highnesses distinguished members of the Norwegian Nobel Committee dear sisters and brothers Today is a day of great happiness for me I'm humbled that the Nobel Committee has selected me for this precious award. Thank you to everyone for your continued support and love. Thank you for the letters and cards that I still receive from all around the world. Your kind and encouraging words strengthens and inspires me. I would like to thank my parents for their unconditional love. Thank you to my father for not clipping my wings and for letting me fly. Thank you to my mother for inspiring me to be patient and to always speak the truth which we strongly believe is the true message of Islam and also thank you to all my wonderful teachers who inspired me to believe in myself and be brave I'm proud well, in fact, I'm very proud to be the first Pashtun, the first Pakistani, and the youngest person to receive this award. <laughs> along with that, along with that, I'm pretty certain that I'm also the first recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize who still fights with her younger brothers. <laughs> I want there to be peace everywhere, but my brothers and I are still working on that. <laughs> I'm also honored to receive this award together with Kailash Satyarthi who has been a champion for children's rights for a long time. Twice as long, in fact, than I have been alive. I'm proud that we can work together. We can work together and show the world that an Indian and a Pakistani, they can work together and achieve their goals of children's rights. Dear brothers and sisters, I was named after the inspirational Malalai of Maywand, who is the Pashtun John of Arc. The word Malala means grief-stricken, sad. But in order to lend some happiness to it, my grandfather would always call me Malala, the happiest girl in the world. And today, I'm very happy that we are together fighting for an important cause. This award is not just for me. It is for those forgotten children who want education. It is for those frightened children who want peace. It is for those voiceless children who want change. I'm here to stand up for their rights, to raise their voice, 
It is not time to pity them. It is not time to pity them. It is time to take action. So it becomes the last time. The last time. So it becomes the last time that we see a child deprived of education. I have found that people describe me in many different ways. Some people call me the girl who was shot by the Taliban, and some the girl who fought for her rights. Some people call me a Nobel laureate now. However, my brothers still call me that annoying bossy sister. As far as I know, I'm just a committed and even stubborn person who wants to see every child getting quality education, who wants to see women having equal rights, and who wants peace in every corner of the world. Education is one of the blessings of life and one of its necessities. That has been my experience during the 17 years of my life. In my paradise home, Swat, I always loved learning and discovering new things. I remember when my friends and I would decorate our hands with henna on special occasions. And instead of drawing flowers and patterns, we would paint our hands with mathematical formulas and equations. We had a thirst for education. We had a thirst for education because our future was right there in that classroom. We would sit and learn and read together. We loved to wear neat and tidy school uniforms. And we would sit there with big dreams in our eyes. We wanted to make our parents proud and prove that we could also excel in our studies and achieve those goals which some people think only boys can. But things did not remain the same. When I was in Swat, which was a place of tourism and beauty, suddenly changed into a place of terrorism. I was just 10 that more than 400 schools were destroyed. Women were flogged. People were killed. And our beautiful dreams turned into nightmares. Education went from being a right to being a crime. Girls were stopped from going to school. When my world suddenly changed, my priorities changed too. I had two options. One, was to remain silent and wait to be killed. And the second was to speak up and then be killed. I chose the second one. I decided to speak up. We could not just stand by 
and see those injustices of the terrorists, denying our rights, ruthlessly killing people, and misusing the name of Islam. We decided to raise our voice and tell them, have you not learned have you not learned that in the Holy Quran, Allah says, if you kill one person, it is as if you kill the whole humanity. Do you not know that Muhammad, peace be upon him, the prophet of mercy, he says, do not harm yourself or others. And do you not know that the very first word of the Holy Quran is the word Iqra, which means read. The terrorists tried to stop us and attacked me and my friends who are here today on our school bus in 2012. But neither their ideas nor their bullets could win. We survived. And since that day, our voices have grown louder and louder. I tell my story, not because it is unique, but because it is not. It is the story of many girls. Today, I tell their stories too. I have brought with me some of my sisters from Pakistan, from Nigeria, and from Syria, who share this story. My brave sisters, Shazia and Kainat, who were also shot that day on our school bus. But they have not stopped learning. And my brave sister, Kainat Somro, who went through severe abuse and extreme violence. Even her brother was killed, but she did not succumb. Also, my sisters here, whom I have met during my Malala Fund campaign. My 16-year-old courageous sister, Mozun, from Syria, who now lives in Jordan as a refugee. And she goes from tent to tent, encouraging girls and boys to learn. And my sister, Amina, from the north of Nigeria, where Boko Haram threatens and stops girls and even kidnaps girls just for wanting to go to school. Though I appear as one girl, though I appear as one girl, one person who is five foot, two inches tall, if you include my high heels, it means I'm five foot only. <laughs> I am not a lone voice. I'm not a lone voice. I am many. I am Malala, but I'm also Shazia. I'm Kainat. I'm Kainat Somro. I'm Mozun. I am Amina. I am those 66 million girls who are deprived of education. And today, I'm not raising my voice. It is the voice of those 66 million girls.